Hello, and uh, if I look scared up here, it's because I am. But uh, fortunately, I'm fairly functional when I'm afraid, so I think I'll be able to get through this. Um, so, journeys and expeditions. Uh, 2,500 years ago, Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Uh, now, we've all heard that saying, it's famous, uh, but I'm going to have to disagree because I don't believe that a journey does begin with a single step. To me, a journey, an expedition, begins with an act of imagination. Um, now, I've never walked a thousand miles, but I have uh, undertaken some perilous journeys and done some hard things. I, uh, I'm a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point, which reminds me a little bit of Moses Brown here, except without the uniforms. And um, uh, I finished, I graduated from uh, U.S. Army Ranger School and then led two uh, light infantry platoons in a hard-charging infantry battalion. I also learned to climb while I was in the service, and um, after I, I fell in love with it, and after I left the Army, I devoted myself to it. I, uh, with lots of love and dedication, I got, I got pretty good at it, hard work, and um, uh, the highlights, I guess, uh, although I'm not climbing as hard or as well or as often as I used to, um, I really did manage to pick up a lot of climbing experience in the last quarter century, and the, the highlight of that those adventures are the almost 20 expeditions I've made to some of the most beautiful and inspiring mountains in the world, uh, most notably in Patagonia. And none of those expeditions began with a single step, not one. They all began in my imagination and they sort of grew from a desire to do something unique and adventurous and, um, and difficult and a, and a need to prove something to myself. And from from that sort of soil, from that dirt, uh, my imagination grew a vision of something that seemed worth doing, uh, at least to me. And that vision evolved into an all-consuming desire to do it, to make it happen, uh, to, to prepare myself in every way, do the required uh, training, you know, set aside the time and money these projects uh, require, and, um, and arrange all the logistics. And only when I... Um, you know, done all of that stuff, uh, put all that stuff in order, was I ready to take Lao Tzu's first step? Uh, but all of it, all of it began in my imagination. That's Fitzroy, named for Sir Robert Fitzroy, captain of the Beagle, uh, the ship that took Charles Darwin around the world, and he's a guy I might add that knew a thing or two about expeditions. Um, and that to me seemed like a vision of something worth doing, something worth committing myself to completely. Because unless it's like really, really hard, it's kind of not worth doing. Um, uh, why would you expend all those time and energy and resources into doing something unless it was really, really hard? If you want easy, you know, go sit on a beach in Cancun sipping an umbrella drink. Um, now that's fine, I've done that, uh, I've got no objection to it, but don't expect that to take you anywhere or you know, teach you anything. Patagonia, this place, exists at the exact opposite end of the paradise specter. It's a cold, windy place shared between Chile and Argentina at the extreme southern end of South America and um, really an otherworldly range of mountains runs down the Pacific coast of Patagonia, and that mountain range stands squarely athwart what um, uh, sailors refer to as the Roaring Forties and the Furious Fifties, that portion of the southern hemisphere known for ferocious wind and storm, and uh, uh, most of the southern hemisphere of planet Earth is water, and that great southern ocean spawns storms of unbelievable ferocity, and those storms get to spinning around the bottom end of the globe, and the only serious obstacle they encounter is Patagonia. You know, my kind of place. 
It's literally impossible to climb in a full-scale Patagonian storm. And those storms can last for weeks, uh, long enough to destroy the morale of even the most tenacious. And getting caught um, by the sudden arrival of a storm when you're high on one of those peaks is um, uh, an experience that no climber ever forgets. Your world goes from you know, sweeping vistas. You can, you can see 100 miles and, um, and in a, just a few hours you'll be caught in a maelstrom of sort of swirling snow and screaming wind and uh, you can barely see 200 feet and your whole world sort of compresses down into this bitter fight for survival. Um, absolute chaos. Now my first trips to Patagonia got me out from under the spell of the two best peaks down there, Fitzroy, which you see here, and Cerro Torre, which was the tallest of those three towers in that first slide. And after I got those two mountains under my belt, sort of built my base of experience, I found myself craving something more. I wanted to do something new, something that had never been climbed before. Um, and I've been, I've been wanting to do that for years, but I never really felt ready and certainly never ready enough to do it in Patagonia. But when I started attempting first ascents, that's when things got really interesting because um, doing something that hasn't been done before entails a much wilder initial act of imagination. You've got to envision something where nothing exists. Um, and doing that is, like, is a fundamentally creative act, like writing, or building, or art, or making love. And in my opinion, besides love, there's nothing in our lives that's quite as fantastic as engaging the power of our creativity. Now that's, that picture behind me, that's the best climbing day of my life. It was so good. But I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later. Because committing yourself to one of these things, to attempting to do something new, it means summoning the courage to try something without knowing beforehand whether or not it's even possible. Uh, and that's actually a pretty big deal. We don't do that very often in our lives, and, and we probably should. When you're attempting a first descent, you know, you're climbing with lots of uncertainty and lots of things can go wrong. Um, finding a way up isn't obvious, kind of by definition, because nobody's ever done it before. And uh, you're on a voyage of discovery into a, a slice of geographic unknown. And, uh, and although that's pretty wonderful, it's, it's, it's actually really wonderful, it's common enough to climb yourself into what is essentially a vertical cul-de-sac, some sort of quirk of mountain architecture out of which you can't escape. And, and that leaves you with no alternative but to accept defeat and go down or else look for some other option. Um, and that sort of unknown is very hard for us human beings to embrace, the uncertain. And, and I'll admit that it's as big a challenge for me today as it was when I was going hard on these big peaks, even though I've got a, a much less physically adventurous life than I used to have. And, and this fear of the unknown must be kind of hardwired into our psyches. Um, and, and even though it's really frightening to face that, and, and it is, there's also something really magical about it too, because um, if, you can, if you can face it sort of straight on with wide eyes, um, it's like being a child again when everything was new and fresh and, and we had ready access to an unstifled curiosity. Which brings me to another piece of popular first step expeditionary wisdom with which I want to take issue. And it's that the first steps of an expedition, a journey, aren't the most difficult. The first steps are easy. It's, it's harder. It's way harder to hang in there and stick to it through the grinding middle of a big project. And the hardest steps have always seemed to me to be those that force you to confront and get through that sort of mental, physical, and emotional sticking point after which you cannot back away when you're really engaged your own commitment. Now this picture behind me, taken by my great climbing partner, Jim Danini, one of the grand men of American climbing, it's, it shows a picture of me sort of ramming myself through just that breach. We're about a, about a quarter of a way up, of the way up uh, the unclimbed 2200 foot north face of Aguja Poinsinot, which is another one of Patagonia's fantastical summits. And, um, and the climbing on this route was absolutely incredible. Um, uh, 
perfect, really, and no one had ever done it before. No one had even attempted it before. It was totally untouched, and, and it, it pushed Jim and I to the absolute limit of what we were capable of. If it had been a tiny bit harder, we'd have failed. And, al and although we got to the top, the summit memory isn't the memory that stands tallest to me after all these years. It's, it's this that's the, that's the memory, right? The doing of it, the going up, totally engaged, you know, full power, going for it. And, um, and, and at that point right here, when we didn't know yet whether it was possible, right? We were totally embraced, embracing the doubt. And, and now that feeling, that memory, I absolutely treasure. And at that point, I literally left the world behind. I was totally caught in the talents of the moment. And, and that was exactly where I wanted to be, riding the cutting edge of the instant. And it's, it's wicked hard to get there in our normal lives. And it's really hard to get there on an expedition, too. Uh, it's, it's hard to stay there for any extended period of time. But on an expedition, that's always the place I wanted to be, like rammed right up onto the cutting edge of the instant. Um, and to me, getting there was more important than getting to the top. If I could get there, my expedition was a success. Now, failure, failure is a part of this, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with failure. And certainly not in the big mountains, where it's so easy to make a mistake and end up dead. Um, but if climbing success is measured by routes completed and summits trodden, then I've failed far more times than I've succeeded. And uh, many times I've done everything right on an expedition, sort of risked myself and sweated out exactly the right amount, uh, only to be rejected by storm when I'm still high on the flanks of one of these big monstrosities. And, but whether or not we stand on top, um, actually depends on forces that are often way beyond our control. And I take pride in failing well, you know, taking the best out of each particular situation and making the most of it. And, and that, those, that ties me back to my, something I read in Beryl Markham's classic adventure book, West with the Night. It's one of my favorite books. Couldn't recommend it more strongly. And in it, she quotes an East African tribal saying that says, victory and defeat are in the hands of God. You must learn to love the struggle. I love that. Now, an expedition doesn't have to be a wild and woolly, hair-raising danger fest, right? Any one of us can have imaginative and adventurous journeys facing the unknown, creating something out of nothing, and those journeys demand courage and creativity and imagination and leaps of faith, and you don't necessarily have to leave home to have one. I, I've turned into much more of a writer than a climber in recent years, and, and I can stand here and tell you that it's, it's, it's harder, with a straight face, I can tell you that it's harder to write books than climb mountains. It literally took me years to grind through the middle of my last big writing project, and, and that was a mental perseverance that, that nothing I ever did in climbing required. So any person's journey is valid, climbing's just a path one that happened to work for me, and I encourage all of you to find one that works for you, to identify and follow your passions, indulge your imagination, engage your creativity, and find something hard. Find something really, really hard that strikes you as interesting and worth doing, and then commit yourself to doing your best to make it happen. So, you know, make a commitment, take a chance, risk failure. Do your best, leave your heart on the field, and if you leap into the unknown and you do fail, well then at least take pride in having failed at full power. There's no shame in that. It'll color your whole life, and the rest of us will all be the better for it. Looking back, I did some good climbs, I know enough to say that, but they're not really important. What they are is tremendously important to me, some of the defining moments of my life. And uh, for it was in enduring Patagonia that I made my bones in my own eyes. So what do we bring back from the high mountains? Nothing, not really. Certainly nothing tangible. Nothing but memories of powerful emotions and, and visions of remote, perfect places. Uh, the, the, the sound of utter silence. Um, the howl of a storm. Uh, the crack and thunder of an avalanche, uh, 
the full power of desire, the sweat of effort, and, and the, the taste of real fear, all of which I've always thought of as it being like what it was like to be alive when the world was young. And um, uh, I find it really wonderful to have exercised what I consider to be the true human power, and that's to um, have imagined a future and then made it happen.